Paris and June 14th, 2013. So, alright, we come to practice meditation, this Chaya Meditation Monastery, almost one week. When you practice meditation, we need to gain mental faculties, controlling powers. Firstly, you need to have this confidence about your practice. According to the Buddha's teaching, who practice the inside Vipassana meditation, you will be able to purify your mind from greed and good illusion. And you can overcome sorrow limitations and overcome physical suffering as well as mental sufferings. And you can gain insight knowledge, high and higher. Finally, you can gain the enlightenment and you can experience the sensation of suffering, the supreme bliss of Nibbana. That's why you need to have confidence, it's the belief, that's the benefit of this practice. When you have strong confidence, will give rise to effort, diligence. So, we try to focus on our meditation objects. As many objects are secondary objects. What kind of objects feel this present moment? Well, it's obvious, you just focus on that. The aiming here, this attention to this object. Use your right effort, the diligence. So after having confidence, this provides you to gain the right effort. When you gain right effort, what kind of external objects appear to your eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, and mind? You will be able to be aware of this. This mindfulness is very important to protect as the internal enemies, greed, anger, and so on, is because internal enemies. So level of mindfulness, what you see, you hear, you smell, you taste, you touch, you think about. Some of this greed, anger, delusion, and so on, will appear to your mind. So to protect, to pre prevent all these internal enemies, the closest enemies, you need to gain mindfulness. Be aware of every object, what is appears to your sixth sense basis. So try to be aware of every single object. You miss one object, and then one kind of the, this many defilement will arise. So to purify your mind from this uh, mental defilements, we need to practice to gain this mindfulness. When you gain mindfulness, <coughs> 
When you focus your mind on your primary object or secondary object of meditation, you will be able to closely, precisely, just uh, focus on this one single object of meditation. So when you be able to focus your mind closely, precisely, this uh, object of meditation, there's no desire, error, drowsiness, slot and cover, restlessness, remorse, doubt, we arise. This means you will be able to eliminate these mental hindrances. Stay about that for non meditators. Almost so appears to you is the desire, sensual desire. You want this, you want that, you want to be uh, some, you know, someone and so on. The sensual desire. You want to see, you want to hear, you want to smell, you want to taste, you want to touch. So, because sensual desire always arises whenever you see, you hear, and so on. Sometimes you still about what you want, you're going to get it, and you worry about it, you feel sad about it, disappointed, and so on. This error arises. Sometimes, like at top, you feel drowsiness, drowsy, sleepy. So you will not be able to focus your mind on your meditation object. So some of your mind is restless. That's the wonders. Still about in the past, feel remorse about something, you doubt about something, and so on. These mental hindrances will prohibit your spiritual development. You will not see the nature of mind and body. You will not gain even the small concentration. So, when you be able to focus your mind on a single object of meditation closely, precisely, no room for mental hindrances to arise. When no mental hindrances your mind, you will see the nature of your mind and body. When we practice meditation, we should know just only mentality and physicality, or only five aggregates just exist. Except this uh, five aggregates, mind and matter, it's not, it's not. So, when you see the nature, for example, right now, all of you hear what I'm talking about. <coughs> Why you hear about that? Because you have your ear sensitivities. This one kind of just, uh, physicality, maturities. The song, the song you hear, what I'm talking about, this one kind of maturities. When these two objects come in context and ear consciousness arises, you hear that. So when we hear about something, the song, or your ear sensitivity, we call it rupa, matter, form. And you hear what I'm talking about. You know the meaning. This consciousness is one kind of aggregate, consciousness aggregate. When you hear, you have feeling. Maybe pleasant feeling, maybe unpleasant feeling, maybe neutral feelings. Depend. Are you like or you don't like? 
so and so and so on. Japan start the feeling of crisis. This feeling we call this uh, feeling aggregate. Then you recognize what I talk about. This uh, we call perception aggregate. Do be able to understand what I'm talking about. You just pay attention to your volition. This mental formation, try to pay attention to what I'm talking about. We call mental formation. So the moment you hear just corporeality, feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness, this five aggregates appears together and disappear together. No man, no woman, no person, no soul get involved. So you have clear comprehension about the terms you hear, just only five aggregates. Briefly, just mentality and physicality. Physical is mean matter, sound, or your ear sensitivity. The remaining feeling, perception, mental formation, and consciousness is the mentality. It's only mind and matter. Physicality and mentality arises. Why do they arise? They have caused everything in this world have to cause. No cause and no effect. So the cause because you have ear sensitivity. Even though you have ear sensitivity, it's no sound. The I don't say anything, you will not hear me. So you hear my voice, it's my uh, sound, it's the maturity as the cause. And then Ear consciousness arises as effect. That's why just mind and body is so interrelated as cause effect. And the arising and disappearing. So when I say something, one syllable, you hear the one syllable, and one syllable and one after another, so arising, disappearing. So you be able to hear it. This means every you know, it's this a syllable, sentence, one by one, arising, this being arising, this spirit. So you will see the nature of this uh, maturity as, in, as impermanence. About your mind, you know, you know one syllable, you know one sentence, and then this consciousness arising in this spirit. So both mind and body just arising and disappearing. We call impermanence. Or oh, what is most oppressed by the arising and disappearing? Because suffering, unsatisfactoriness, no one wanted. So when you hear about something, you get a control on this uh, situation. So dependence cause effect. It's no cause, no effect. So it's beyond our control. It's no substantiality. Just think about that. When you hear about something, no substantiality. Just the nature of mind and body arise and disappear. So when you practice meditation, you understand the phenomena of the mind and body. And then you have clear comprehension, right view, right understanding, right thought. So to gain this uh, wisdom, right view, right understanding, right thought, we need to practice meditation. When you practice meditation, you can get it out of this wrong view because we have the wrong view. We consider this as 
This body is a, is I or is mine. This is not I, it's not mine. No, it just have mentality and physicality. So we need to understand the realities. That's why who would like to beautify the mind from mental defilements? Who would like to overcome sorrow and limitation, physical suffering as well as mental suffering? Who would like to gain peace, happiness, to gain enlightenment? We need to develop our mental faculties. This controlling power and God, such as confidence, right effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. So when you be able to possess this five kind of controlling power, mental faculties, you will be able to eliminate wrong you, doubt, just uh, every moment of your noting, your meditating. So from this momentary eliminated this uh, mental defilement, improve your practice, you will be able to eliminate this uh, wrong you and doubt. This uh, temporary, longer than momentary, and try to develop practice this inside vipassana meditation. Finally, you can get it out this from you and down totally. So our purpose, practicing meditation is to gain wisdom, to gain this right understanding, right thought, to be able to get it out, wrong you and that. We is the, the main cause of the suffering. It's not only this life. In this life, if you have wrong you, you think it's me, it's mine, it's I, and so on. So you attach to your body, you attach to your belonging, you attach to your environment, and it's all is the cause of suffering. So when you gain the wisdom, right understand, right thought, you are not attached to anything. You know this is their nature. So every physicality and mentality just arises and is impermanent. So unsatisfactoriness, unsubstantiality, and uncontrollability, when you understand their characteristic, their true natures, what they really are, you will be happy in your life. What you come across in your daily life, whatever you see, you hear, you smell, you taste, you touch, you think about, you can let it go. So, if you practice meditation, finally you gain the highest vipassana knowledge and gain the enlightenment, you can get it up as wrong and down. So, you will not be able, you will not, after you die, you will not, we reborn this unhappy state. So we are to be reborn again for a good existence. So who practice meditation is very useful in this present life and life after. So mainly this present life is to be able to live rightly, wisely, Blamelessly, happily, peacefully, so all, all of you try the best you can to develop this confidence, right effort, mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom 
May all of you be able to overcome all kinds of suffering, difficulties, and gain enlightenment in this life. Thank you for your attention. Amen.